Welcome back to the morning show here on Arise News. Joining us now is Oji Akpe with stories trending around the world. Hello, Oji. Good Hello, morning. Oji. <laughs> Hi, Dr. Amati. <laughs> Happy Friday. Yes. That was a great interview, you guys. Had. We had so much. It was, we were all laughing in the newsroom, by the way. It was great. All right, let's begin here in Nigeria. The National Broadcasting Commission yesterday announced the suspension of the license of African Independent Television and Ray Power FM belonging to Dark Communications Limited. The NBC Director General, Mr. Modibo Kawo, stated infractions committed by the media houses, which includes their inability to pay license renewal fees and the airing of presidential election documentary while the matter was still before tribunal. This has roused a lot of social media reactions, with many fearing that the action infringes on Nigerians' right to free speech. The founder of Stambik IBC Bank PLC, Mr. Atedo Peterside, posted a tweet saying, the closure of AIT signifies dark days ahead. Our right to free speech is next. Regulators are now competing to consciously destroy businesses and jobs on flimsy grounds. All right. Yes, we said it earlier that Mr. Tedo Peterside, the founder of uh, uh, Chartered Bank and uh, later Stambik IBT Bank, is uh, you know, absolutely correct. Yes. And that it is good to see that other stakeholders, I mean, his territory is banking and public policy, you know, but here you have him, you know, speaking up and defending the right of the media, you know, the freedom of the media and the right of the average Nigerian to free speech. Now, we hope that other stakeholders in Nigeria, other concerned citizens will join us yes. in this protest to say that the uh, dictatorship, the heavy handedness, of the uh, National Broadcasting uh, Commission is unacceptable and flies in the face of earlier affirmations uh, by the Buhari government. Now, another thing that we have seen is that, you know, these regulatory uh, agencies uh, seem to be waking up. Uh, the other day, it was the Securities and Exchange uh, Commission, you know, sanctioning o Oando PLC. Now it's the National Broadcasting Commission. At another time, we had the Central Bank of Nigeria, okay? We hope that this is not an orchestrated strategy, you know, uh, to intimidate business or right. to intimidate political right. opponents right. or, you know, to, to play some kind of game. I hadn't thought of that angle. Yes, it, it is possible. And that's what he said. You that's know, what, that's so what it's possible. Says, right. And uh, I think the, the government of the day uh, should also watch it because uh, Nigerian people are, have been already alienated Correct. from the government. To take steps that will further alienate them right. is neither in the interest of the government or the people of Nigeria. This um, possibility that they could be acting in concert really is sinister. Was it yesterday you referred to George Orwell's 1984? Yes. That would be Orwellian. Mm. But we let's look that. at the reasons that they gave, which I don't. I feel like it's so flimsy. I, think I don't reasons, understand. I think the reasons warrant a query, mm. possibly even a suspension of for a certain Absolutely. period until the money can be. Paid well, they, they claim well, not that they've been, been, yeah, they claim that there have been negotiations, and you know the AIT and the Dark Communications has not heeded to many of their queries, and well, but it's been the going payment, on. The payment of uh, fees is not really the foundation. No. They are complaining of divisive, inciting statements made on. Uh, AIT, right. particularly on a money show like the ours, Kakaki you know, show. the Kakaki program, they, mm -hmm. they, they refer specifically to uh, Kakaki Social, yes. which is a segment right. on that program. Now, who made the NBC, you know, the regulator uh, of social media? <laughs> because there was a specific complaint about social media. Yes, they were saying right. that the social media is interfering with mainstream media without proper editing. Okay, and I think that when you talk about query, uh, that's one thing that we should query. Because could this be, you know, restricting the scope of the social media through the back door? And who says that the mainstream media cannot take materials from the social media? Exactly. So all of these questions, you know, uh, are before us. And I said earlier that we are embarrassed thoroughly uh, because the gentleman who is the head of the uh, media, uh, of the uh, Broadcasting NBC. Commission, uh, Larry Modibu Kau, you know, uh, he used to be, uh, you know, a champion of the freedom of the press and of the uh, rights of the press. But now I think it's very ironic 
that you find him in government and is presiding over the repression of the media. You're right about that fact that you stated about dictatorship being returned, because that's one of the concerns the PDP has raised. There's a lot of people that have raised concern about this, and I hope that it gets sorted as soon as yeah, possible. Yeah, there's a heavy handed. Absolutely. Really. And you can't just keep, you know, uh, closing down companies, violating, uh, you know, companies. You, eventually, you will threaten employment. You will create more unemployment. You will destroy businesses. So the public interest, you know, uh, best interest of the country should be the basic consideration in all of these cases. Absolutely, Dr. Bhatti. Well, let's head over to China. On Tuesday, China's Culture and Tourism Ministry warns its citizen of the risk of traveling to the U.S. as an alert citing frequent recent cases of shooting, robbery, and theft. On the same day, the country's foreign ministry, along with China's embassy and consulates in the U.S., issued a security alert for Chinese citizens alleging repeated harassment of Chinese nationals in the U.S. by local law enforcement officials. Both notices advise Chinese citizens to raise safety awareness in the U.S. I mean, I thought this was hilarious. I mean, <laughs> but it was predictable. It is predictable. Yeah. I mean, this is not the first time that they're warning. Whenever they have issues, remember, like in the case of Canada with the Huawei chief um, is the chief officer that, that was detained, arrested, they yes. also issued the same thing. And I thought that you know, it's just it's just weird that they cited recent shootings because shootings have been happening in the so US all of a sudden, for the decades. United States is a no-go area, <laughs> war zone. I thought well, this is an aspect of the uh, trade war yes, between absolutely. China and the United States. Yeah. And we've seen both countries at one level imposing tariffs, 25% uh, on $200 million worth of uh, goods yes. uh, from China on the part of the United States, uh, tariffs on $60 million dollars uh, worth of goods on the Chinese side. And then the United States has gone after Huawei uh, by putting it on the entity uh, list. And President Trump has gone on a shuttle, you know, uh, making uh, China uh, a major issue, which was uh, on the agenda in his discussions with uh, Prime Minister Theresa May. But what the Chinese have added to the battle, to the uh, war, to the trade war now, is this media propaganda. And what the uh, ministry, uh, the Communist Party of China, is trying to do is to whip up patriotic sentiments yes. to make uh, China look like an uh, e, uh, U.S. look like an evil country yeah. where nobody is safe. And then you know they have also uh, trying to promote, uh, been trying to promote nationalism by referring to the 1950 to 53 Korean War, mm -hmm. particularly the 1952 uh, Battle of Triangle Hill, yes. uh, where you know American forces you know, were decimated by the Chinese. And this is like saying, well, we have beaten the Americans before. Yes. We will I beat will them, again. them again. This time. <laughs> <laughs> and did you, did you notice what Xi Jinping did? For me, that was the ultimate salvo. He went to Russia and described Putin as his best friend. Yes. And that might have had Trump crying in his coffee, because you know Trump wants to be besties with Putin. Absolutely. And you know, even the day before, I think the education ministry also warned against the dangers of people studying in the U.S. I'm like wondering, well, all, all of the a sudden, many in the U.S. a huge <laughs> Chinese contingent. Well, unfortunately, there are many Chinese studying in the Absolutely. United States. Absolutely, and they're also contributing so to the United States. It's amazing that yes. this war is just getting it's out so of hand petty. at this point. Well, why, petty. why they adopt hard media strategy uh, to fight this trade war? Uh, we should be concerned about the implications On us. for the global exactly. community yes. exactly. because the war is already part of the uh, source of the slowing down of global economic growth. Exactly. Well, well done. It's innocent it. people like us, you know, <laughs> like our countries, you know, that will be affected. Yeah. When two elephants fight, it's the grass that suffers. So. All right. Let's take a story under entertainment. R&B singer R. Kelly yesterday pleaded not guilty to 11 additional sex related charges, including four counts that carry a maximum prison term of 30 years in prison. The singer's sexual assault allegations have drawn widespread media attention. In February, R. Kelly pleaded not guilty to 10 counts of aggravated sexual abuse involving three girls and one woman. The singer's defense attorney, Steve Greenberg, said after the hearing yesterday that he could not speculate as to why prosecutors had fought the new charges which pertained to one of the four women he was charged in February with sexually abusing years ago. So we're just going to chat. Oh, well, yeah. surviving our career, yes. you know, we'll on. discuss this again and again. But yeah. he continues, he and his lawyers continue to maintain his innocence, you know, and uh, uh, it's a lesson for everybody 
uh, this case has been brought again now by Jehonda Pace. Uh, who the was, same woman? Yes, who was one of the uh, persons who featured uh, in the documentary Surviving uh, Al Kali. You know, and this again is an aspect of the Me Too movement. We have seen in Australia where somebody uh, survived it. You know, we'll see, Rush, yes, yeah. we'll see uh, what happens in the case of uh, Robert Kelly. Yeah. But, but so when, when it rains, it pours. For R. Kelly, it's been so many things happening. Even recently, his manager is, you know, saying that he's going to actually attack the father or the um, one of R. Kelly's girlfriends. I mean, he came out yesterday talking about that, and I thought that was. And really then he had all his child. Yes. Um, what's it called? His those allowances that you pay to children, yes. whatever they're called. Yeah, he has um, all those issues. Uh, child uh, support. Ch issues yes, child well. support. Well, thank you, Ojope. We look forward to seeing you again uh, on Monday, right? Yeah. This weekend. Oh, this weekend? This weekend. Yeah, that, that's for you and Tudum. <laughs> I'll be here. Thank you very much. You guys much. get your weekend. I will be here. <laughs>